Welcome to this presentation entitled Laudate Deum and the Spirit of Nonviolence. Laudate Deum is a Latin phrase meaning praise God for all God's creatures and is the title of Pope Francis's recent apostolic exhortation on the climate crisis. My name is Ken Buttigan. I teach at DePaul University and I serve on the executive committee of the Catholic Nonviolence Initiative, project of Pax Christi International. In the face of the severe crisis facing our planet, Pope Francis has issued Laudate Deum, an urgent follow-up to Laudato Si, the Pope's historic 2015 encyclical in which he called on all humanity to take concrete steps to care for our common home. Laudate Deum is a phrase that echoes the life and actions of the 13th century patron saint of ecology, St. Francis of Assisi. It uh, was released on his feast day, October 4th, 2023. In this new exhortation, His Holiness explains that he was compelled to publish an update to the earlier text because the worldwide environmental crisis continues to deepen and a much more robust effort by all of us is required to address this global catastrophe. Let's begin our exploration by noting some of the basic elements of this text, which the Mary Knoll Office of Global Concerns identified when it was first published. In Laudate Deum, you see these fundamental points being made. First, climate change is real and caused by human activity. Second, climate change damage is often irreversible un and unequally distributed. Third, technocracy is not the answer. Fourth, world cooperation is necessary, but responses so far have been inadequate. And finally, humanity is intimately connected with the rest of God's creation. In this presentation, we build on these main points, but also dig a bit deeper into its significance by seeing it against the backdrop of what can be understood as a fundamental paradigm that Pope Francis has been advancing during his papacy. The spirituality, way of life, method of change, and universal ethic of nonviolence, a principle and practice that has been a defining hallmark of Pope Francis's mission and that connects directly with the importance of humanity taking responsibility for fully engaging the threat to the earth. This has been expressed by the Pope in many ways, but perhaps most clearly in his 2023 book, I am asking in the name of God, 10 prayers for a future of hope, where Pope Francis writes, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., a source of inspiration for his call for peace, expressed it clearly in the last speech he gave before his assassination. It is no longer a question of choosing between violence and nonviolence, but between nonviolence and non-existence. And then Pope Francis writes, the choice is up to us. Echoing Dr. King, Pope Francis declares that nonviolence is essential to the survival of the earth and its inhabitants. Why? Because the essence of nonviolence, the refusal to do harm, the commitment to resist violence, the determination to put love and truth into action for the well being of all, not almost all, but all even when that means loving our enemies and opponents. This is the basis of creating the collaborative solutions to the climate crisis and to fostering the global public will for implementing them. 
Nonviolence is the foundation for an integral ecology and for a more viable future. This is the choice to which His Holiness is calling us. In Laudate Deum, Pope Francis sharpens the reality of the choice before us. He does this by highlighting the concrete realities of systemic violence, which are worsening the destruction of the planet and the growing climate crisis. He roots this violence in a technocratic paradigm and a widespread attitude of indifference, denial, and blame, and a widespread, af uh, including blaming this crisis on the world's poor. He holds that this paradigm is furthered by a destructive economic order that creates a throwaway culture, which includes throwing away other human beings. In the face of this violence, he points us toward a nonviolent way, underscored by two powerful convictions he enunciates in this document. Quote, this allows me to reiterate two convictions that I repeat over and over again. Everything is connected and no one is saved alone. Because everything is connected, violence hurts everyone, just as nonviolence can mend the web of life in which we are embedded. This very image makes clear his second point that we are all in this together and that we will not be saved singly. Laudate Deum embodies the spirit of the nonviolent way forward by standing against the power of the systemic violence destroying the planet, by proposing nonviolent approaches and strategies, and by calling for nonviolent action. In reflecting on this follow-up to Laudato Si, it is possible to see this new document itself as a form of nonviolent action that Pope Francis is taking at this critical moment in history. As in Laudato Si, Pope Francis clearly marks out this exhortation, the sobering statistical dimensions of the climate crisis and its impact on billions of people but he goes beyond only painting this grim picture by also illuminating the role of power in this growing disaster. Francis is especially concerned about the existential threat posed by the expansion of human power over all creation. As he puts it, the greater problem is the ideology underlying an obsession to increase human power beyond anything imaginable, beyond and before which non-human reality is a mere resource at its disposal. Pope Francis then goes on to say, not every increase in power represents progress for humanity. We need only think of the so-called admirable technologies that were employed to decimate populations, drop atomic bombs, and annihilate ethnic groups. We stand naked and exposed in the face of an ever-increasing power, lacking the wherewithal to control it. We have certain superficial mechanisms, but we cannot claim to have a sound ethics a culture and spirituality genuinely capable of setting limits and teaching clear restraint. It's not strange that so great a power in such hands is capable of destroying life, while the mentality proper to the technocratic paradigm blinds us and does not permit us to see this extremely grave problem of present day humanity. The great present day problem is that the te technocratic paradigm has destroyed that healthy and harmonious relationship. In any event, the indispensable need to move 
there is an indispensable need to move beyond that paradigm. Paradigm. We need to rethink, among other things, the question of human power, its meaning, and its limits. So let's think about power, this issue that Pope Francis has raised. Power is the ability to accomplish tasks, but often it is understood as a force of domination, threat, or coercion to accomplish those tasks. This is power over, which is the heart of violence. This violent power is at the core of structures of oppression and destruction, wreaking terror and trauma. The earth is being assaulted by this power over. There is, though, another form of power, power with. This is a form of integrative power that operates not by threat and attack, but by cooperation, collaboration, creativity, and a wide range of non-dominating approaches. We embody this alternative kind of power when we find ways to overcome our differences peacefully and to work together. This is what can be called nonviolent power. Pope Francis's watchwords for this nonviolent power have included fraternity, solidarity, encounter, and closeness. This nonviolent power is at the heart of synodality, which calls us to walk together, listen to one another, and find ways to create a mutual way forward as church and as people of God. It is at the core of Pope Francis' relentless call for peace. In Laudate Deum, Pope Francis denounces the violent power which is being wreaked against the earth and its human and non-human denizens. But he also alludes to its alternative, the nonviolent power we all possess to make things different and new. As Pope Francis seeks to shed light on steps forward in this exhortation, he highlights a series of concrete developments that can help us move from the violence of the global systems, which continue to fuel the war against the earth, to creating a more nonviolent order. First, he calls for the emergence of what he names a new multiculturalism, what he names a new multilateralism. This appears to mean a shift from the old post-World War II order to an emergent cooperation among the nations of the world not dependent on a single power or a grouping of nations. The old system will not resolve the climate crisis, Pope Francis is saying to us. In fact, it has fanned the flames of this crisis and has not been able to adequately come to terms with it in any definitive way. In imagining the, this new order, Pope Francis reaches beyond classic models of geopolitics to the lessons of modern civil society. So. He says in this, in this document, more than saving the old multilateralism, it appears that the current challenge is to reconfigure and recreate it, taking into account the new world situation. I invite you to recognize that many groups and organizations within civil society help to compensate for the shortcomings of the international community, its lack of coordination in complex situations, and its lack of attention to fundamental human rights. So it's at this point in the document that he gets uh, interested in efforts for these kind of nonviolent, uh, what he calls multilateralism actions uh, from below. So, for example, he says, uh, 
the Ottawa process against the use, production, and manufacture of anti-personnel mines is one example that shows how civil society with its organizations is capable of creating effective dynamics that the United Nations cannot. So what is this Ottawa process? This was the whole movement, global movement of uh, campaigns and social movements around the world that called for an end to uh, and banning of landmines. And that was a nonviolent process and it was conducted by people uh, uh, around the world. This is an exciting move, drawing on the power of civil society, which includes the efforts of non-governmental organizations, campaigns, and movements to tackle concrete challenges, both local and transnational. For example, that campaign to ban landmines, which, as Pope Francis says, shows the capacity to create effective dynamics that other uh, groupings uh, cannot. And this amounts to the emergence of, uh, again, what Pope Francis calls a multilateralism from below and not simply determined by the elites of power. The demands that rise up from below throughout the world where activists from very different countries help and support one another can end up pressuring the sources of power. It is to be hoped that this will happen with respect to the climate crisis. For this reason, I re reiterate that unless citizens control political power, national, regional, and municipal, it will not be possible to control damage to the environment. To this point, Pope Francis points to what amounts to nonviolent organizations and popular movements in civil societies that have taken important initiatives or governments and the old global order has failed. In a time when the power of strategic nonviolence and civil resistance have been quantified, increasingly shown to be effective means of making social and cultural change around the globe, Pope Francis is highlighting how these nonviolent strategies may contribute to the emergence of planetary initiatives for building the movement of movements, which could be decisive in generating the people power crucial to mobilizing the will for the dramatic changes Pope Francis sees as essential. A needed ingredient for this new, more nonviolent order is a new model of diplomacy beyond the old power brokers and systems that relied on the balance of power that often depended on power over or violent power. The old diplomacy, he says in this document, also in crisis, continues to show its importance and necessity. Still, it has not succeeded in generating a model of multilateral diplomacy capable of responding to the new configuration of the world. He says, our world has become so multipolar and at the same, same time so complex that a different framework for effective cooperation is required. It is not enough to think only of balance of power, but also of the need to provide a response to new problems and to react with global mechanisms to the environmental, public health, cultural and social challenges, especially in order to consolidate respect for the most elementary human rights, social rights, and the protection of our common home. It is a matter of establishing global and effective rules that can permit providing for this global safeguard. Then he goes on to say, all this presupposes the development of a new procedure for decision-making and legitimizing these decisions. Since the one put in place several decades ago is not sufficient, nor does it appear effective. In this framework, 
there would necessarily be required spaces spaces for convert conversation, consultation, arbitration, conflict resolution, and supervision. And in the end, a sort of increased democratization in the global context so that the various situations can be expressed and included. It is no longer helpful for us to support institutions in order to preserve the rights of the more powerful without caring for all of these throughout the world. In each of these passages, Pope Francis is signaling frustration with power over models and saying instead that what is needed are responses that address human rights and global safeguarding, implying that the current system is not responsive to the violence of the lack of human rights and the threats to our planet. Then he explicitly calls for facets of nonviolence, conversation, consultation, arbitration, conflict resolution. But he goes further. He applauds those from below who have taken action when the power brokers haven't. Once and for all, let us put an end to the irresponsible derision that would present this issue as something purely ecological, so-called green, romantic, frequently subject to ridicule by economic interests. Let us finally admit that it is a human and social problem on any number of levels. For this reason, it calls for involvement on the part of all. In conferences on the climate, the actions of groups negatively portrayed as radicalized tend to attract attention. But in reality, they are filling a space left empty by society as a whole, which ought to exercise a healthy pressure since every family ought to realize that the future of their children is at stake. Here, Pope Francis is lifting up the importance of dramatic nonviolent action filling a space left empty by a society as a whole, which ought to exercise a healthy pressure and fill that empty space. In pointing to the next international conference in Dubai, for example, Pope Francis recounts the many conferences since 1992 and is saying in effect, enough is enough. This next gathering has to, he says, take definitive, concrete, and comprehensive steps that are efficient, obligatory, and readily monitored. This new process, he adds pointedly, must be marked by three requirements, that it be drastic, intense, and count on the commitment of all. Pope Francis exerts all people of goodwill on the climate crisis to a call for profound, powerful, and relentless nonviolent action. These objectives will not be achieved without mobilizing nonviolent action campaigns and movements, dislodging peaceably but with strong determination the pillars that keep in place the structures that increasingly put the earth at risk. He calls the entire world to what he terms pilgrimage of reconciliation. There are no lasting changes without cultural changes, without a maturing of lifestyles and convictions within societies, and, and there are no cultural changes without personal changes. I ask everyone to accompany this pilgrimage of reconciliation with the world that is our home and to help make it more beautiful because that commitment has to do with our personal dignity and highest value. At the same time, I cannot deny that it is necessary to be honest and to recognize that the most effective solutions will not come from individual efforts alone, but above all, from major political decisions on the national and international level. Pope Francis is calling us all to embark on a pilgrimage of reconciliation, a reconciliation with the earth, a reconciliation with one another, 
and a reconciliation with our own selves. Naming it as a journey to reconciliation highlights the centrality of nonviolence to that new unity, which will be crucial to a transformed world where we care for our common home and for one another. This is in keeping with the longing Pope Francis has expressed repeatedly for a more nonviolent church and world. As when he wrote in his 2017 World Day of Peace message, to be true followers of Jesus today includes embracing his teachings about nonviolence. In the most ordinary local situations and in the international order, may nonviolence become the hallmark of our decisions, our relationships, and our actions, and indeed of political life in all of its forms. I pledge the assistance of the church in every effort to build peace through active and creative nonviolence. I think of nonviolence as a perspective and way of understanding the world to which theology must look as one of its constitutive elements. May we make active nonviolence our way of life. In this spirit, Laudate Deum is a call to nonviolent action. At the same time, it is itself a form of nonviolence, calling on the people of the world to embark on a way forward, refusing to harm the earth or each other, calling out the realities of the global violence of the climate crisis, calling on the world to confront these realities with organized nonviolent strategies, and calling on all of us to shift to a more nonviolent future. We see in this presentation that Pope Francis foregoes a flowery conclusion to this document. Normally, there would be one. And instead, look at what he says. Emissions per individuals in the United States are about two times greater than those of individuals living in China and about seven times greater than the average of the poorest countries. Goes on to say a broad change in the irresponsible lifestyle connected with the Western model would have a significant long-term long impact. There is no flowery phrasing here. Pope Francis is calling, especially on the United States and the West, to make a total conversion to a whole other way of being. He underscores all of that theologically. So he says, toward the end, for when human beings claim to take God's place, they become their own worst enemies. Nonviolence has been at the core of Pope Francis' papacy. It is at the heart of this update to Laudato Si, Laudate Deum. Thank you.